Nevada y San Felipe Road en altitud de 5 minutos. Yo soy Magali Ortiz. All right, you guys, so I have some insight for you. Instead of continuing to try to lean on my own understanding, <laughs> I said, you know what, let me ask Source directly. And I did, and I got an immediate answer. And I included the clip at the beginning of this video. My dog, okay, let me back up. I was driving to my mother's house because every morning I bring my dog to my mother's house to spend the day with her dog while both of us are at work. I said, let me ask Source. I don't want to keep arguing with people. I don't want anyone to feel bad about my perspective. So let me just ask the all-knowing. So I did. In the vehicle, I said, God, divine all, please provide me numeric information about abortion. The first sign I see when I look up that has numbers on it is 65. The second, 55. And immediately after I pass that sign, my dog puts her nose on the tuner in my vehicle and changes the station. I immediately look to see what the station was. Now let's get into deciphering what God has to say about abortion. Now I am never too proud to say when I'm only half right. <laughs> and essentially what I'm realizing is that both pro-lifers and pro-choicers are right. Believe it or not, let's get into why. Now what's interesting is I used to have a video on my YouTube channel that I made years ago about my perspective at the time of abortion. My perspective at the time was that any being that is aborted is a being who only intended to experience that short experience. So no harm was being done. That was my old perspective. But I deleted it as I grew mentally and as I came out of darkness that I was going through at the time because of the fact that I gained additional awareness, additional awareness of vibrations, additional awareness of different emotional states and trauma. I became trauma informed. So my perspective changed, especially because of the fact that it got a lot of views and I wanted to make sure I was not wrongfully promoting death. Now the realization I came to today is that both of my perspectives are right. I have to combine them though. Now let's explain this using the numeric sequences or numeric guidance I received from source this morning. Now when we talk about the number 65, we're talking about someone's personal life because of the number six, pulling in karmic energy because of the five. The total is 11, which indicates this is associated with how we are interacting with another, how we're interacting with others, how we're choosing to navigate connections and relationships. So when we talk about 65, we're talking about the way that we're navigating our connections and our relationships is causing personal karma in our lives. So like I said before, when it comes to blood rituals, that is a technique that can create a karmic connection. It's not the only way to create a karmic connection. Another way is intense emotion. Right. If you meet someone and you, it's, there's just an immediate connection, there's an immediate attraction. Or if it leads to obsessive emotions, that is an example of a karmic connection. Another example of a karmic connection is any relationship that contributes to difficulty, any relationship that causes you to grow because you have to navigate tricky waters. That's another example of a karmic connection. Another example of a karmic connection is if someone harms you or you harm them. Um, if you're murdered by someone or you murder someone, that is a karmic connection, but that also relates to blood rituals because blood is shed. So fetus or not, when that blood is shed, a karmic connection is formed or continued. And here's another problem with this practice energetically. If you are in a karmic connection with someone, and so you have an abortion in an attempt to be able to separate yourself from this being, the problem is, is you're actually confirming the connection. Now, the problem is, is that when we choose to abort instead of giving birth to a child whose existence will likely force us to grow in immense ways, we are cutting off that opportunity. We're cutting off whatever karmic lessons were meant to be learned by allowing this energy to fully play out because we're deciding to end it by aborting. 
So when choosing to sleep with people, you guys, we have to be careful. We have to be mindful because there are karmic consequences to this practice, to the blood ritual that is abortion. Now, the next number I want to go over is 55. 55, because you're seeing five two times, it is actually an angel number. So what you do is you pay attention to the resonance of the number, which is five, and how many times you're seeing it. What this indicates is we're talking about karmic matters as it relates to a certain connection because of the number two, which is the number of connections or how you relate to the world or your mindset. So we're talking about karmic mindset, karmic way of relating to the world or a connection that surrounds karmic matters, okay? The total of this number, however, is 10, which means that this connection or karmic way of relating to the world or relating to others or this karmic experience essentially that is associated with a relational matter is actually intended to help you grow, is actually intended to help you gain additional insight. It's actually intended to help you elevate spiritually. But this is only going to be a productive lesson or a productive experience if you actually learn from it. If you continue lacking the mindfulness and awareness and thought process that's needed to become more mature in these matters of sexual health and sexual relations, and you continue having abortions because you remain impulsive, that is not gaining the lesson. That is not achieving a new spiritual level, which is what the number 10 indicates. So if navigated properly, this can help you ascend. But that is due to the wisdom that's acquired, not the practice itself. The practice itself is a low vibrational blood ritual. But if you allow that trauma to teach you and mold you and make you better and help you learn and be able to make different decisions in the future, that's what we're talking about when we talk about ascension. It is moving to a higher place, spiritually, mentally, physically. Last but not least, let's talk about 1007. So this number is meant for us to understand the beings that are actually coming into existence who are being aborted. So what God is trying to communicate is the fact that because of the number 10, these are beings who are new to the human experience. These are beings who, who have likely never existed as a human before. And when you pair it with 07, what that tells us is that the reason for dissension, because it is a number that is following zero, is actually facing death, is actually facing darkness, is actually facing karmic opposition and karmic difficulty. So these are beings who are currently prohibited from experiencing an eight cycle. Because when you total 1007, you get 8, which is the number of balance, the number of peace, the number of serenity, the number of wisdom, the number of achievement. So these are beings who are not yet ready for that. They're not yet ready to experience that full human experience. Or God has not yet deemed them able to do so. So... That's what God told me this morning. I wanted to share it with you guys. I wanted to add to my perspective because I am someone that is open-minded. You know what I mean? Especially when it comes to God telling me something. <laughs> when it's other people, not so much. <laughs> but when God tells me this is what I need to share and this is actually the full truth of the matter, as a high priestess, it is my duty to share. No ego involved. So I hope this can help you maybe alleviate some of the guilt, alleviate some of the burden, um, because we have to understand, yes, as human beings, we are partially accountable, but God always, and I mean always, has a plan, has a system to help souls grow in due time. But with that being said, do you trust God? And if your answer is yes, then why don't you trust God's decision to reverse the Roe versus Wade decision? Just something to think about. What do you think God has in store for us next? An opportunity to ascend to a space that is more welcoming of life, the vibration of love and life versus the vibration of barrenness and death. Because just because abortion supports the vibration Earth is currently in doesn't mean that the practice 
will be supported by the vibration we are rising to.